clicking into this video. I would like to share that this video is brought to you by Home Trust. Home Trust is a Singapore trusted community review site which offers advice and feedback from hundreds of reviews for homeowners and hiring design firms. As you can see, just by using my phone browser, I can easily search for projects that matches my requirements for inspirations. It's a relief to know that Home Trust take their review seriously. They don't allow individuals or entities who own or are affiliated with a firm to publish reviews of their business or competitors. I highly recommend those who are starting their project soon to check out Home Trust and also those who have done theirs to leave reviews to help other homeowners. And now, let's get started on my home tour. This is the floor plan of my place and it's a Type 2A forum flat which we applied in 2016. So we actually hacked down bedroom 3 and the service yard's wall as highlighted in yellow. The general theme I had for this house was actually Scandinavian Bohemian but I did not follow through it strictly as you can realise throughout this video. We also have many Disney and Peanuts decor elements incorporated to satisfy our inner child. So right at our entrance, we have this wooden rack for us to hang our masks and recycle bags and we also have this umbrella stand from IKEA. We did not build any carpentry to cover our bomb shelter door and for our DB box, we got our contractor to install some shelves for extra storage as many would do. So we call this our guard dog who will welcome you as you step into the house. Got it from Taobao. So this is the overview, a zoom out shot of the entrance area. So now we'll move on to the living area. I feel that our living room fits the Scandi Boho theme the best out of all the spaces in the house and I really like this angle of it so I made it my thumbnail. Our TV is a 65 inch LG OLED and our console is 1.8 meter from Taobao. We decided not to mount the TV because we want to be able to shift things around in the future and also our TV console is quite high so the leveling is just nice. We also shifted the power points above the console so we can hide the wires behind the TV. Besides choosing furnitures with rattan elements, I also stick to neutral colours like beige and brown for the Scandi Boho vibe. There's also green colour here and there to balance it out. Instead of getting a soundbar, we simply connect the TV to the Marshall speaker we already have and I think the aesthetic of it just fits nicely. I always knew I want a brown leather sofa for my home but finding an affordable one in the right shape locally was difficult. We bought ours from Taobao. It's affordable but not real leather. The length is 1.8 meter and it can sit 3%. We had difficulty fixing the legs but it's working well as of now. We wanted to include some Disney elements so we tried to bring it through the decors while still feeling the Scandi Boho theme. This side table is from my previous studio and it just fits the Wi-Fi mesh nicely. One of my favourite pieces from our Taobao haul is this terrazzo coffee table. Um, I just like the beige colour legs and then the very seamless terrazzo top. We are very lucky to have it arrive in one piece. We installed fan lights in most of the rooms except kitchen and I got to know this brand Eco X from the Lin house who is actually my photography client. Even though arch niches are really common nowadays, it's still a feature that I really really wanted from the start. I was really excited when it's finally ready for me to style the niche. I wanted the space to be more personalised so I can get reminded of my favourite place, Tokyo Disney Resort, just by looking at it. So I have pictures taken there and also Disney related stuff on it. I try to mix and match with some other objects so it doesn't stray too much from the general theme of Scandi Boho. 
The reason we decided to hack down the walls of bedroom 3, which is behind the living room, is because we prefer a more versatile lifestyle. I intended to use it for work for the shoots, so having a bigger space is better to work with. With the new layout, our home also looked less confined. We opt for a collapsible dining table instead of a fixed one for flexibility. We can use it for hosting, dining and also for work. But usually, we just use other chairs instead of the ones that comes with it. When not in use, we just place it behind the couch like a console. This is how it looks like when we both work from home. We didn't want to install glass doors because we find it unnecessary and expensive. For a more airy look, we only installed day curtains for both living room and also the multifunctional room. Let's move on to the kitchen area. We have a Snoopy and Peanuts team for this whole area and we formally name it Peanuts Home Cafe. This is our coffee and tea nook. There is no cup pantry at all, so everything is actually from Taobao. I have a huge mugs and cups collection, so this is where I store them. And I really like the reed glasses on this cabinet. So over the years while waiting for our BTO, I just collected many Snoopy and Peanuts homewares for our home cafe. The cabinet also comes with drawers where we can put our tea supplies. Overall, I wanted the area to have a Japanese cafe vibe, so I chose the decorations based on that. Besides the Nespresso machine we got via subscription, we also got a Philips water dispenser that comes with a tank. We need to refill it regularly, but we made this choice because we want to place it at the nook instead of the kitchen without any fuss. I also highly recommend this Roborock S7 as it has been really handy and helpful since we moved in. Initially, we wanted to have our island custom made by our contractor, but it was way out of budget, so we decided to get this IKEA island table, which actually works just fine and fits really well. I'm glad we made this choice. Our bar chairs are also recommended by Lim House on their channel. We actually went to their place and saw them firsthand and thought that they are really sturdy and nice. I also love how the island comes with storage behind and it's really spacious. Now let's move on to the main area of the kitchen. Somehow we are just really attracted to the multi-doors fridges made in Japan so we decided to go for this one from Hitachi and I love how it's white and comes with different compartments. Our cabinets are in shaker style and we have wooden knobs and handles for that cafe vibe we are looking for. Our hub is Fujio's induction and ceramic hybrid, our hood is also from Fujio. The cabinets are pretty standard except that we opted for bloom spice rack on the far left and also paid more for drawers instead of open up cabinets for our plates and pots. Another satisfactory purchase from Taobao is this water tap. Not only you can put it out, it also comes with this gorgeous gorgeous beige colour. Above the sink and tap, we have the dish drying rack. We are not sure if this is a good choice because we do find it cumbersome to put our dishes on top. But it does save us some counter space where I can put some not very practical just for aesthetic stuff. We hacked down the service yard walls because we didn't want to clean the doors and windows that comes with it and we covered the pipes with cabinets. We can still assess it if we need to because we can just remove the laminations and shift the shelvings around. We don't really do heavy cooking so it's fine that the laundry space is not confined. We wanted to build an extra counter space for our countertop oven opposite the washing machine but it was again out of budget. So we just got this rack from Taobao at a really good price. But now, we are indecisive about the oven. And we just use it to store our extra appliances and also cook rice on it. 
We also decided not to upgrade the Marikita drying rack from the BTO. We just use it as it is by adjusting it to a desirable height. It works just fine. Now let's move on to our common toilet. Somehow I really wanted the toilet to be in black and white and industrial style and it's really completely different from the styling of outside. So I was having really a lot of doubt when it is completed. Nevertheless, I still really like these tiles I picked up from Hafari. The graffiti and sketching style just reminds me of Snoopy and Peanuts. So all the black accessories are from Taobao except the black glass panel which is customised by my contractor. The mirror cabinet, tab and sink are also from Taobao. Whereas the cabinet below the sink was built by my contractor. Now let's move on to another multifunctional room, which is my Toy Story room. We are both huge fans of Toy Story, so we wanted a room to be Toy Story themed. We have a half tone wall to mimic Andy's room. And I wanted to paste cloud stickers on the blue part but don't have the courage to commit to it as of now. This room is also considered to be our wardrobe room, so we have L-shaped wardrobe here. Initially, I wanted it to be in shaker style too, but because of budget issues, I decided to dismiss the idea. Building an L-shaped wardrobe can be tricky due to the space utilization inside. This is how it looks like. It's not the best solution, but it works for us. We got a Billy shell from IKEA to display some Toy Story collectibles. I think if I were to choose again, I would have picked out a white shelf instead. I prefer to stand up and be really near the mirror while doing my makeup, so I didn't want to have a dressing table. I was on top of and saw this perfect vanity solution. It's a standing mirror with makeup and accessory storage inside. There's also more storage spaces at the back. I hold some of my small business supplies on this trolley. This room is also intended to be an office area for one of us, but both of us prefer to work outside at the more spacious area. We installed a really simple looking blind in this room. Sometimes it's easier and simpler not to overthink. Finally, we have reached the master bedroom. The Scandi Boho team is intended to stay in this room, but with a touch of Disney Sea and also Duffy and Friends. As much as we love the mint green chest drawer we got from Taobao, it was also super difficult to fix with no clear instructions. We spent one day cursing and swearing to get it fixed ourselves. The reason why we didn't build a wardrobe in this room is because we felt that the resting area will be too confined with it. We want the bedroom to be a relaxing space with no additional stress factor. We got the contractor to paint a sage green arch on the wall. It's an affordable addition if you like curves but don't have the budget for other curved elements. We do not have much built-in storage, so we have to choose furniture that are more functional. Our bed is the mom bed from IKEA that comes with 4 drawers. The chest of drawers is not only for aesthetic, but also gave us additional storage. We chose blackout curtains with a tinge of green, only to realise it doesn't really serve the purpose as we have a translucent bathroom door. For the master bedroom bathroom, we wanted it to be more luxurious so it feels like we are on staycation every day. We matched wood and gold sanitary wares like the arch mirror. We really love how this bathroom actually turned out to be. I 
place a photo taken at Disney Sea to fit the theme of the master bedroom. We really wanted a bathtub but wasn't so sure if everything would work out. Luckily, the bathtub we got from Taobao was installed with not much issue. The green mosaic tiled wall is one of my favourite choices made for this house. I can stare at it all day. For both of our toilets, we only chose to overlay one wall and keep the default tiles for other three. And it was quite a cost-saving decision. I came to the end of our home tour. To conclude, our total rental cost is 36k and with the furniture and electronics, it adds up to around 60k. It's a relief for us to be able to have our dream home even with a tight budget. I will try to share more insight on the cost in the future. Meanwhile, feel free to ask us any question in the comments below. Thank you!